Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 41. It's the 3rd of April 2020. I'm Ryan, the GM. Here are the players. Hello, this is Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, the half of Druid. Hey, I'm Scott. I'm playing Kromba, who's a half orc paladin. Hi, I'm Sophie. I play Kit with Anastasia, a wood elf rogue. Hi, I'm Stuart. I play Reach, a half elf monk. Perfect. And what do you remember from last time? <laughs> Uh, we pissed off a shopkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you didn't really piss them off. You kind of like you made them want to pack up oh, right. very quickly. Yeah, yeah, we we put the fear of God in them. They were still happy to <laughs> sell to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean that <laughs> was that, that was that was nice of them. I mean, they wanted money, so yeah, of course. <laughs> We've gained a patron. Uh, likes alcohol, apparently. Yep, uh, you definitely attempted to bribe something. They spent it all on yeah. booze. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Up ten platinum. I told Chan this, by the way, and he was like, "What? How? How much booze did they buy? <laughs> like, just really good, expensive booze." Yeah. Oh yeah, I couldn't put. It's quite funny that I forget that we got drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, I got. I got. That works. Hey, hey, the beer I'm currently drinking. Do you just remember the objective that was gained last session? Though is probably my point. <laughs> yeah, because. Uh, that the dust is demon dust. Mm -hmm. Yep, spot on. Ten points to two. Yeah, which Katie pulled out and no Katie pulled out of nowhere. And like That's like who's Katie? Off. You also pulled Katie from nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Know, I tried to say Katie and so and it came out as Katie. So there you go. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, so. Yes, as Stu said, he needs to try and find some way of proving that the ash that a uh, so like Kitty sorry has in her crossbow case is in fact demonic in origin. Yep, and then the noble guy, uh, whatever his name was, said he will happily vouch for you guys to get to forge. If we can do that, yeah. yeah. But he's suspicious of wizards. So that might be difficult in general. Uh, but was happy to to drink a lot, quite frankly. Um, I loved the drinking bit. <laughs> of course you did. You can pretend drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he stands by what he said. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Lord Bam Bamrid Deepmain was his name. That was it. Bamrid Deepmain. Yep. So, goals. Let's talk about some of those. Uh, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Right, so we've still got get word to GGW about Gil. I'm going to just assume that's still in play. We've got yes. goal two, figure out how to close hellholes as a team safely. Still in play, most likely. Get to forge mm -hmm. safely. Still in play. Get the dwarves to help the citadel. Probably still in play. And get proof to convince Lord to vouch for us. How's that looking? Or has MD got any goals they would rather do just now? Still seems fine to me. Mm. All happy? Yeah, I don't see any yeah. reason to change anything. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. That was easy. Cool, done. I think it's because we added in the get proof one last time. So, mm. yeah, that's pretty much the goal of this session. So, yeah. We will see how successful we are as a team. Uh, goals are done. Sessions updated. Uh, yeah, so, here's a question. Are we focusing in on you guys waking up at the table or did you just go back to your room? At the kind of hotel you all booked into. What I happened? mean, I'd like to think I made it back there. <laughs> I was sober enough, I think, to drag Crumbar. Yeah. I might not remember it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just taking over the cobbles deliberately because he deserves uh, it, yeah. Like, yeah, the back of your head's a wee bit sore, but <laughs> <laughs> it might not be a headache. It might not be the alcohol. Yeah. But yeah. So, Stick. yeah, I think it will be the morning then uh, of the next day, right? And this is because I think he's paid for two nights, I think. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, this will be like day two. Essentially, uh, and you can wake up. And did you just get one big room, or you just, I think you all got individual rooms, right? So probably yeah, individual. We all paid individual. Yeah. yeah. So, in fact, we paid for individually, and there was a, a meeting room in it as well, was it not? Was that the idea? I don't think was, so, but there can be if you want but, that to be. Like, I don't mind if there's a common room if you wish. Yeah. Uh, like, I got a private common room if you get what I mean. A not so common yeah. room is what it's probably called. Um, <laughs> Room. <laughs> there'll be a dwarven name for a common room that can be accessed by everyone who has paid for it. That'll be yeah. 
in Dwarven, that'll be a fancy word like German. Um, so, yeah, you can have one of those. And, right. cool. uh, yeah, I guess you all eventually make your way there in the morning. It did, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I think we can we can open there. Morning. I think that's cute for us, yeah. Yep, Good morning, Crumbar. How are you? <laughs> I I I just like pick up like whatever glass or roll or whatever is near me and just chuck it at him. <laughs> <laughs> I duck because I do not trust your aim to be true. Do you mean you turn into a duck or? <laughs> no, don't do that because I will try to eat you. <laughs> Maybe I should suggest to Shani doesn't play a shifter so you don't try and eat him. <laughs> Maybe you should suggest that he does so that I do try and eat him. No. Since I can't eat Kitty anymore. No, it was quite annoying to try to keep you from eating Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> We're not playing babysitters. <laughs> not, not since she's lost Eremos. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't so, do was kept throwing them at towards demons or something like that. Anyway. Can't be trusted, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's like magical child services and then you don't then everybody debates is it about magical children or is it just magical child services? <laughs> 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 anyway, it's the morning, yes. He's in the room. He's pat Crumbar in the back of the head very wholeheartedly to wake him up, yeah. Right. I guess we need to find someone who can prove this ash is demon ash. Uh, was once a demon. Uh, anybody know anybody? I don't even know what city we're in. Anvil. Uh, <laughs> I, I anvil. just... I just <laughs> anybody, know anybody in Anvil? <laughs> I just kind of jet, like, hand in head like wait sorry no head in my hands is kind of point towards Arya and she goes why don't we get her to ask her bow yeah. 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 you talk to your bow like but I mean there's a, there is a fiery demon in your bow surely it would be able to confirm demon ash <laughs> It might also scare the living Jesus out of everyone. And... Yeah, I don't think that would work, even if I did know how to summon the actual demon and not just making its power light up. Oh, level. right. Okay, I thought that was like one in the same. Sorry. Not yep. to my knowledge. I guess we're going down, talk to the receptionist, see if they can point us in the direction of a magic school or something like that nearby. Uh. Mm. Yeah, and the city that doesn't like magic, I think. Well, it's not <laughs> yeah. so much the city that doesn't like Some magic. Of it, I mean, otherwise yeah. healing and stuff would, would take so much longer. Yeah, plus it's not the city doesn't like it, it's just that noble didn't like it. Right, cool. Yeah. He just had a distaste for wizards. Mm. Idiot. <laughs> I mean, probably, right? It was, he spent 10 platinum on booze, so yeah. So is that the plan then? Head down to what is essentially the bar beneath you. I like yeah. bars, yes. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. There's nothing else I can think of. Yeah, do that. I'll prepare my best Nordic but actually Scottish dwarven voice for you as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Scottish voice must be really tough for you. Huh? It is, it's in fact very <laughs> difficult. I'm still trying to maintain it every day of my life. <laughs> so people don't realise how Russian I secretly am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you head downstairs. Uh, is everything going, or is this like a one-man effort? What's happening? Yeah, I think everyone would end up going down. <laughs> well, years years ago, down. Let's have every answer, shall we, Scott? <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm assuming everyone would go down since we're all trying to. Maybe some people want to hang back and steal your stuff. I mean, I definitely want to hang out here. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the sneaky druid's up to. Good save, Ryan. Me, uh, me of all people. <laughs> yeah, it'd be the least expected person. I mean, I definitely would probably hang back since I'm nursing a hangover that could kill a dwarf. So, <laughs> what about everybody else in? Is Kitty and Arya? I'll go with them. Yeah. Are you? 
Oh yeah. Cool. Where else would I be? No. I mean, there are many places. You're in a city, so yeah. You could go off and do whatever you wanted. Um, yeah, but I don't like cities, so I'm just going to hang out with the people that I'm comfortable <laughs> with. Yeah, you probably have noticed as well that Ruya is not particularly comfortable here either. Given that you're underground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not ideal for a bird. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so... We're, we're birds of a feather, her and I. Ah, <laughs> uh, see what you did there. Taking notes for session title potential. Birds <laughs> of a feather. Uh, right, then... You head downstairs, obviously you've got the the kind of the big public common room, as it were. The the very common room. And yeah, there's obviously a, a couple of people in already. Um dwarves don't really recognise uh, opening and closing times as such that way. Who is it that's gonna do the talking? Could be me, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be so, so far. Yeah, I, was I think I know what you're looking for by this point, so you'll, you'll be the one that would be like putting the request through, I guess. I'm trying to remember what you call. Uh, there is a word for somebody that can actually identify stuff, but uh, but, but anyway. Uh, An identographer. Was, yeah, could be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like <a> zoo, but <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not that word, but <laughs> it could be. A thingy majigger. Right, go up to reception. Uh, it's it's reception essentially the bar, yeah. Essentially the bar, it's the bar. Yeah, go yeah. up to the bar. Uh, we're looking for uh, a magic user, do we, who would be able to identify items for us. Is there anybody you'd recommend in the city? And, uh, the person behind the bar, obviously with stereotypical towel in hand, uh, cleaning a tankard, because what else would they be doing at this time in the morning, right? And uh, they're looking at you, and they're like, "Causing trouble, are we?" No, fuck. And then you just start laughing as you like yeah. awkwardly try and reply. And, uh, Definitely not. They just laugh and they sling the towel over their shoulder, and they're like, so. "Questions before breakfast, is it?" <laughs> uh, there are certain members of the party that might not manage to breakfast this morning so we thought we'd just jump straight into it uh. as you wish uh, and then they give you directions which I'm not going to RP because it's arbitrary um, they give you directions to like the magic area of Anvil which is essentially like got a college of magic in it and shit like that and a bunch of magic bookshops and various things like that so it's essentially like the fucking diagon alley of this particular one. <laughs> so, yes. Like, you know, yeah. mini horizon, you know. Little horizon town is probably what it's called. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So they give you directions there and say, yeah, if you're looking for magic people, then it's your folks. Right. Excellent. Thank you very much. The eggs are excellent if you come back. He just kind of chuckles away himself. To say, send up five fried eggs and some bacon <laughs> to a <our> room. <laughs> yeah. Might make a mess though. So. Mm. Anyway, uh, do we just want to actually head off on our own and leave Cranbar at the moment? Or? Well, you could just say I think we should go and speak to him. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go back up, to say hello, and we'll uh, go back up to Cranbar. Right. Found out where the magic sector is, so we could do is go in there, find an assessor. See if you can uh, figure out, prove that this dust is demon dust. Uh, fancy a trip? Uh, I just kind of like lift my head off the table. And just look, look, I was like, and you need me for magic? <laughs> we don't need you, no. But you could maybe magic some wine into that glug. And that would probably get you back the hair of the dog back walking again. <laughs> <laughs> Singing again. <laughs> and I just, Don't like, enable I just, him. <laughs> I, just, I just kind of like, like roll my head over and be like, now, 
wine is my kind of magic, and then just pull out the <laughs> pull out my a uh, my jug, and then just fill it full of wine, and then just kind of gather myself and just walk down, stepping Roll away. Roll a d twenty for me, Scott. No problem. I thought you were just going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my god. Uh, can you roll a d4 for me? No. <laughs> oh dear. Right. We'll come back and get you. Take three damage. No, no, it's not that. It's, um, <laughs> you do everything you do to summon wine into the jug, right? Mm. Um, but as soon as you take it, there's like the remnants of like sticky meat in the bottom of it. Um, oh, tur- turns out you've already tried to continue drinking the stone. <laughs> uh, nice. This is maybe why you're remembering. They're going, oh yeah, I did already make meat. And I've uh, I, like, a lot. <laughs> I like this idea of like me trying to take a sip of it and nothing comes, and then I'm just like tapping it upside down. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. I was like, oh well. Yeah, I'm up now. Where to? <laughs> Can we leave the place without passing the bar? <laughs> um, I mean, sure, yeah. Like if you really want to, yeah. Yeah, but just go out the back <laughs> door. Let's just say there's a back door to the place. Yeah, out we go anyway. It go down and out. Yeah. Uh, have we still got another night here? We do, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Just don't. Yeah. Early leave the next morning. Right. Okay. Uh, and your horses are all looked after for now as well. Yeah. yeah okay, I was just thinking should we leave stuff, but it doesn't matter at the moment. Yeah, like right, your cool. your room's lock and stuff, so yeah. if you wanted to leave yeah. stuff, you could. Yeah. And you did pay for like, was it moderate conditions or something? I think he's paid for. So yeah, like it's not. Yeah. Like, these yeah, aren't in. Ones. These aren't in like super dodgy. This is a a decent place to stay. Um, yeah. yeah. Not to say that if I decide through the random chaos of whatever you do, somebody tries to break in, but that just depends on uh, what he's got up to in town and how much noise he's make and if he's just let everybody know that there's a demon army coming, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no idea what you're on about. Probably you don't at this point, you've drank so much. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe you're realising just how good your divine protection actually is. Um, <laughs> so how much you've went through. Yeah, kill a dwarf indeed. <laughs> oh, oh crap, did I accidentally kill the other guy? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> and it just became that co- the hijinks murder mystery. Um, Three o'clock in the morning, mate, I've ate him. Guys, you know, we packed a lot of stuff to travel here from uh, uh, Glitterhagen. Yeah, it was a lot of that, a dead dwarf, because I've got one in the bag. But yeah, so you've got all your stuff together. You've left the uh, the inn, which I don't remember the name of it, but it does have a name. Um, I'm sure it does. I'm sure we named it something. But yeah, what is the what's the plan? Do right. you on the way to the the magic sector, or are you say? No, just the uh, kitty. You've got your ash the ashes with you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> jingle Excellent. jangle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. the last thing she have with her? Mm. Yep. I think the last thing she has not carrying is three javelins on a horse. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you're, is the plan just head straight there, or are you going to do other stuff in town? Head straight there. I think i have just got anything else they need to do. Is it? Me. Mm. Head straight there. Yeah. yeah. So. Travel for like maybe maybe an hour through the city, um, based on the directions you got. And yeah, like you can clearly tell the place has got a lot more magic y folks here. Less everyday clothing, slightly more ostentatious clothing. Um yeah. You just notice that in the day to day, like foot traffic of people. Again, primarily dwarves you see here, like occasionally different races, but primarily dwarves. Um, other people stand out a lot because, by definition, they're taller. Mm. So uh, makes sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so what are you looking for while in the magic quarter? Because you've got shops that sell various levels of bullshit. 
<laughs> yeah. We are looking for an assessor and like demonish style magic, so dark. Like, like an occultist almost? Yeah, yeah. That's probably more what we're looking at, looking for at the moment. Okay. Uh, who wants to make the role to find somebody slightly less than standard for magic then, right? And it's probably going to be like a perception or investigate. I don't really mind which because you could actually finding a mind witch probably me it. I mean I'd be the one that would notice things more it's I mean I was a wizard's apprentice so I'd probably know what to look for yeah, Combar's okay. just Combar's just focusing on standing up mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I, I mean I could be helping you Kitty if you want yeah yeah so do you want to give me a roll then Kitty with advantage or yeah if you're yeah. getting help uh, I'm going to do perception okay <laughs> what? Exactly the, the same. Yeah. What? So, you are looking around. I am, um, and I think while you are wondering this, obviously as a group, you stand out quite a bit, right? Because you are all taller than the standard people here. But qu quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think by like at least two feet in everybody's case, at least. Um, but. Also, you've got two paladins of the Golden Order with you, a third person who's wearing golden armour, um, being Adri. So, three of you look like paladins, right? Um, as you just wander this place, so you're getting a lot of looks uh, as total out-of-towners, more so than normal, because, let's face it, rumours have had a day to travel around now about yeah. Golden Order, comma, demons, comma, oh god. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, you're getting a lot of looks, um, a lot of conversations that start, stop, look at you guys, and then, like, hush and chat away again. Uh, but, yeah, like, there is a couple of places that are still, don't seem as interested in you as the majority. Like, a lot of people, like, go up and, like, close doors over, even though they were open for people to walk in and out of. They're not flipping signs or anything, they're just being blunt about their reception when you guys walk by you know yeah go away <laughs> like yeah and it's not so much like if you came in and spent money they probably wouldn't care but they're not exactly welcoming you into their stores is the gist you're getting as you look around um and there's been a couple of places that just don't seem to care like maybe one or two uh, that's mostly in like the kind of the arcane market if you will uh there is a as i said like a school of magic where like people like dwarves go and teach themselves magic but that's surrounded by like obviously a big giant wall and the wall goes like way up into like the cave roof if you will uh, and it's kind of sealed off so that's like at the back end of the uh, the arcane quarter of this place mm. but there are people coming in and out of it like just the doors aren't opening people are just walking through the door <laughs> Right, so they're not locked; they're just closed over, kind of thing. No, they're they, like they're not opening, but people are walking through them. So they're basically just there for show. But I feel like they'll stop people they don't want going in. Yeah. Yeah. So right, okay, I get you. So they're just like it's like ghosts going through them or something. Well, I mean, you typically yeah. experienced this in Glitterhagen because when you left the Golden Order, you walked through a ghostly door from the inside. But when you look back, the door is sealed. Much like when you looked at the Golden Order Hall in Horizon, it was the big solid door on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the door is similar idea, right? Let in who you want, block who you don't. And this is a big magic school in Anvil, so yeah. I'm just going to call it the, the Arcane Anvil because I'm really like creative that way. And I like the alliteration. The reason I dislike it is because uh, the place is called Anvil and it feels so on the nose, but the Arcane Anvil. I mean, the Anvil Arcane sounds cooler, but here we are. What's the, what's the plan, right? So you've got a couple of shops that don't seem to care about you guys. Most of them do, and have closed doors over. 
Again, they're not locking doors and they're not flipping signs. They're just closing doors. Um, and, yeah, you stand out a bit. And there's a giant magic school. So, magic shops, magic school, people staring. And remember, oh. everything's pretty dark here except the glowing magical stuff. I am um, because dwarves care about their own eyesight. Mm -hmm. They can all see in the dark. So, yeah. And I mean, people so, that so can all so can all of us. So. Yeah, but like, that's something else you notice that the pockets of color you see are people that are clearly foreign to Anvil, that are carrying oh, like right. a torch and stuff, or have magical illumination of some kind, because. When you have night vision, it's black and white. All of your night vision is black and white. Mm. Right, yeah. So anything that's giving off light, the areas around that will have colour, which is probably a bit photoshoppy to look at. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, um, well, I guess Kitty should kind of take the lead on this since she's the one with the ashes of creepiness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Ashes of creepiness. I mean, what did my perception really discover that the place we ought to go in has got that weird door? Uh, Is that all it did? No. As I said, what you discovered was what I described. A lot of people are giving you weird looks. Some places are closing yeah. their doors on you. Some places haven't closed their doors on you. And people are walking in out of a solid door to the big magic school. Don't well, you dare try and make me go through the door, Kay. <laughs> Well, I guess there goes my first answer. Um, <laughs> you still need to go to the magic school. There are shops you could ask, but again, it's up to you. So it's what you use. Yeah, I'll probably go speak to one of them ones that hasn't closed the doors to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for the argument of which side of the street, left or right? Uh, left. Okay. Uh, can someone roll a d12 for me? Mm. Yeah. I got it. There you go. Oof, nice. Uh, nice. Is, what is with me and 12? What are the... You are... I am... That is just strange. Right, okay. This is a super interesting choice. Uh, okay, good. Uh, let's see if I can get a better image though. Two seconds, I bring this up. Uh, pick one or two for me now, Sophie. Uh, two. Cool. I'll get rid of that one, keep this one. Such a weird choice, but it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> not so I ominous. I know, I know it is, but don't worry about it. Uh, it'll be fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> It's that meme where the thing's on fire. <laughs> it's fine. So, you go to the left side of the street. You wander in uh, to the store. Is every day heading in with Kitty then? Because I think, obviously, Arya would be yeah. close by with her yeah. at the front. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe it reaches propping up Crumbar. Um, yeah, I think at this point, I'm just kind of going where I'm to. Yeah, just kind of following on. And you head in to this particular store. You obviously walk through beads, because let's face it, there are obviously beads on the door um, instead of a door. And as you walk through them, they, they give off like a scent from your childhood, something pleasant. So it's different for every day as you walk through the door. Mm. So when Kitty walks through, what's like a pleasant smell from her childhood? Bacon bread, probably. Yeah. Perfect. So you get that smell oh, of like nom, nom. freshly baked bread, like hits you. Um, what about yourself? Are you? Probably the same, especially if there's any like, you know, nicely cooked meats as well. Yeah. So like maybe like a kind of strong like you know, meat just after you've like hunted an animal or something and you've cooked it. Yeah. Um, what about yourself, Reach? Thinking that there'd be candles burning or a straw Some bed. Sorry, say that again, Stu. Candles burning or what? Candles burning or a straw bed. 
Monk, yeah. Monk. So it wouldn't yeah. be anything too fancy, but. Uh. Yeah, yeah, but maybe it was like maybe the candle burning, like the kind of the wick at the bottom of a, a candle when you're reading a book or something late at night, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's reading the books that you're meant, probably not supposed to be reading, in the <laughs> in the order. <laughs> um, but this is like obviously, I'll read this just now. It'll be fine. Uh, and what shelf Um, probably just be like. The what blood of my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, I'm thinking if it's childhood, or maybe not. I've been on a mass slaughter just quite yet. Crumbar's um, had an interesting like that. Must young. <laughs> Crumbar's had a multicultural childhood, though, so it this really depends what he thinks yeah. as of pleasant. Pleasant for me would be round the tribe campfire uh, with a big like spit roast on it, just getting mm. cooking and stuff. Yeah, so Dwarven like... spit roast or... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, you don't want to know what the thing is, like, eating, that's... Orcs and dwarves rarely come into contact in terms of conflicts, because um, orcs hunt on this, the world, and dwarves mainly live in the underworld, and they're kind of at opposite sides of the world, really. Uh, mm. So it's not that often. Uh, that that happens, but if it does, it's probably messy as hell. A bit um, delicacy, then. Mm, yeah, a rare yeah. treat. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it could even be something like when Crumbar first went hunting, right? It could be maybe it was the the, yeah. the smell of his first kill when he's like cooking yeah. it on the fire with people, because um, you know you provided for the tribe at that point. That's maybe a thing. Um, yeah, and so, at that point, I know, like, yeah, I'm a baller. So like, you all walk through like these beads. Uh, into the, the shop and there is like as soon as you get past the beads as they drape past you that like floods your minds and uh, then as soon as you're in and the beads settle back down the smell of the incense in the place hits you it's obviously slightly overpowering uh, and there is a gentleman in the background uh, of the store everyone can thank Sophie for this role it's going to go in general chat for us Oh, there he is. <laughs> what the? Heck? That's not a dwarf. No, it's not. Well, you said this perception would be lacking at the moment as yeah. well. <laughs> 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 oh, that's the first thing that said. That's not a dwarf. <laughs> and I think um, he opens his eyes and he smirks and he's like, "And neither it seems are any of you." <laughs> We've came to the right place. We want somebody who can identify something. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like he, he, like puts his feet down onto the ground, uh, and his like robes settle down, and he says, "And exactly what is it you wish me to identify?" Uh, Kitty, can you show him? I just do the same thing again, like oh, whip out this Cross thing of yeah. demon ash, just shove it on, on the like the counter. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I looks at it and goes, "Yes, it is a crossbow case." Yeah. And I'm just like, "Oh, for God's sake, this again!" Open it up. There you go. Okay. And he kind of just looks down at it and he says, "You wish me to identify the material inside the case?" Yes, please. And. In the interest of commerce, and he kind of gestures to the fact that you're in a shop. <laughs> How much do you think it would cost for that? How important is the answer? Oh, what a penis. Depends what the answer is. And he just he smirks at that, and then uh, he says, What value does this have for you? What does it Withhold. If I see what value, don't know about. You went to a spooky guy, right? This is what you get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Five, five silver. He looks at you, and then he uh, he walks kind of like closer to you, and he from behind your ear pulls out five silver and just hands it to you. Check my pouch to see if there's still all this silver and gold in it. <laughs> yeah, it's just five additional silver, it seems. Yeah, cool. Uh, as soon as you go to put it in your purse, to turn it into a butterfly and vanishes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh... like money is only valuable if you value money. 
What do you value then? And he puts his like hands together and like taps his fingers, and you can hear the clacks of the nails in each other. And he's like, unique things. I don't like where this is going. Uh, Dax, we do have a half health that was a cat, cat at one time. <laughs> hey, right, I know. <laughs> Attacked again. <laughs> uh, and then he says, like, af after you all look at you guys, and he puts, like, his hand with his kind of claws on them across his, like, kind of bare chest, and he's like, I myself am rather unique. I was just kind of, because I'm still in the... His hair is still all, like, wavy and stuff, as if it's under yeah. water. I, d I don't think Crumbar would really have a... Uh, have his filter on just now, so it just sorry. Kind of wait, camera. wait. Let's go back. Crumbar has a filter. Believe it or not, it, it's not. It, it does, it's not. It's it's not for much, but he he does have one. You're right. It's um, not for much. But yeah, he just kind of looks up and goes, and what and what the hell are you exactly? What am I or who am I? Let's start with... look at each other like both. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love you, Sophie. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Great movie. Uh, um, so yeah, and he, he, he smiles at that when obviously Kitty says that, but he looks back at a uh, Grumbar, like just waiting to see if Grumbar's gonna actually. I just kind of go. Let's go with both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he laughs and he says, "My name is Oradak." And he kind of like nods, kind of solemnly. I'll pop that in chat for you guys. <laughs> I'm just gonna make him Solemn. introduce himself. He's like a oh, Oradak Dorath. Mostly so I don't have to type this and do it later. <laughs> and yourselves, may you introduce... And he just looks at uh, everyone. I am time. Reach. Uh, a monk of the... Uh, Paladin of the Golden Order. Yeah. You're well addressed for a monk of the Golden Order, yeah. it seems. Not misleading not at all. Overly, I'm not overly. I'm dressed as a monk, by the way. I'm... Yeah, and you can read into that if you want. You can always roll and say. <laughs> do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Yeah, and <laughs> do so it. You know what is mean by well dressed yeah. for investigation and say. I mean, what do, what do you think it means by that? Well, to be honest, I've got in, in, well, uh, a close Anna Haggard and so on, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, like because I'm not going to tell you, so it's whatever you think is is valid for reach as it is. Yeah. Is the truth? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I've introduced myself, mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. Um, so, um, <laughs> I was going to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that <laughs> autopilot? Was that there? <laughs> oh, no. I was going to say, like, I'm so free. I'm, I'm a, a rogue person. <laughs> I would have loved it so much if you had. Just... Yeah. I'd have confused him. So that's even more unique. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, I, a yeah. player I... within my shop. Amazing. <laughs> I see you're also talking the third person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kitlith, I'm Astasia. Uh, that's all I'm going to say to him. Fuck that. And he just says, yes, <laughs> aptly dressed. And he nods to you. <laughs> Thanks. He seems to be very interested in clothing. I mean, again, I mean, well, look, at, look, at you, want look, at the, look at the drabs he's got on, you know? like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could try to figure out why on earth he's referring to everybody's yeah. clothes, see if I Are can figure it out. Oh, I figured out actually my placers. He's uh, secretly uh, got one. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> he is in fact got one. Yeah, we're in a tailor shop for the magic <laughs> users. <laughs> <laughs> Some leaps of assumption there, but yeah. <laughs> You've been desperate to find a tailor in this city, by the way, Stu. What is it? What's been happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arya, just whenever you're ready. Yeah. I wasn't sure if... Yeah, I'm roll insight if you want to. Okay, yeah. cool. Nope. <laughs> my I know brain. nothing. I, I would expect I that from myself me. Snow. So, what does Arya think this guy's interest in the way he's describing how people are dressed? Like, what is... What's the thoughts? Or maybe even what's Adri's thoughts on it? 
I think he's perhaps used to judging people by their clothes. Okay, then yeah, you, that's what you believe. Clothes. You're not worth my time. Yeah, so but, yeah. You can believe you're that, not then, yeah. well dressed. Yep, you can definitely believe that. Because your insight got you nothing, so that's what you believe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's two down, I guess. Nikkei okay, looks across the group like. Uh, Drew, you want to go next then? I will kind of nod my head at him and be like, and I am Arya Bluebird. And I'm just kind of like nodding my head, and as I nod my head, you see Ruya nodding its head along with me, kind of mirroring me. And he says, <laughs> and then I'm like, and this is Ruya. Both so aptly dressed. I kind of like turn my head to a side, kind of like. I I <laughs> Ruya tilts the other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're like, what? <laughs> you see Say confusion what? on both of us. He kind of nods to both of you as well. I am. <laughs> And he makes like, I don't know, like some seeds appear and feeds them to Ruya. That was quite nice of them. I'll take them and be like, oh, thank you, that'll be good for later, and kind of shove them in my pocket. <laughs> I don't trust this man to feed my bird. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. I mean, the last thing he gave us did turn into butterflies, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he looks at you, I think Crumber, last. I just kind of like look up to him and then just go I'm kind of like and at this point I'm trying to like get more balance I'm like I'm too hungover for this sh <laughs> what you, what's your point <laughs> and he just kind of looks at you and he says yes very poorly dressed <laughs> and as, again I'm just like well may not look nice but it's functional Hmm. And he just like his lips call tight, his brow furrows, and he's like, hmm. You may ask, and then he gestures to you three that aren't Crumber. <laughs> <laughs> you wish to know what this is. You may barter with me. This one may not. <laughs> you are welcome to stand quietly or leave the shop. I'll continue to just, like, try and prop myself up against the wall. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, he kind of turns back around and he looks a bit more pleasant at everybody else. And he says, yeah. yes, transactionally speaking, there is usually a custom to this. You offer me something for my services. I can definitely offer insight into this and he kind of like gestures to the like the ash, with his kind of yellowish, orangey hands. Well, it's more importantly, like, can you prove that it's demon ash? So you that are not. That's what we're here for. Like, you can just tell us it's ash, but we know. Well, like, like as soon as you say that, like he cuts something, he says, "So you're not unfamiliar with its origins, then." No, we know where it came came from, but we can't prove it. I see. Who is it you're trying to prove it to if you already know? Uh, was it actually the... It wasn't the king, was it? It was just that uh, other dude. Ken Kennedy or something like that. But mm. yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to give you his name again? I think it's, <laughs> it's in the chat somewhere, I'm sure, right? Let's That's somewhere. Uh, it's not that far up, I don't think. Hey, we were in a beard. In a... It's like I've got it written down, but I've, I'm sure it's in here. Yeah, it's up here. I'll just re paste it in. Bam. Bam, red deep man. So, to remind everybody from a story point of view, you got him super drunk and he got you super drunk. And <laughs> he said, I will vouch for you because this seems exciting. <laughs> uh, the idea of taking strangers into Forge. If you can prove this is as serious as you say, and then you said, I've got demon ash, and he went, Do you? <laughs> and then you've got a box yeah. of ash, and uh, that's when you just wanted to get proof. So, really, it's just to convince him to get you to forge, but depending mm -hmm. on what you're going to tell the king, it's obviously going to depend on if you can prove this or not, right? Because if the king mm -hmm. can, like, look at it 
and debunk it, you're screwed, right? Even though you know okay. you killed a demon and put it into the case, right? Yeah. But, Can we not hopefully get like a certificate of authenticity or something? <laughs> right now, here's the thing, yeah, you could totally get something like that, but what value does that have to somebody that doesn't believe you, right? What if this guy is a complete hoax, like hoax chop keeper did, right? Well, I still don't know what race he is, which is worrying, because... Yeah. You can like, roll for I'm it guessing. if you want. Do you want to roll for it? Uh, insight, yeah. No, it'd be... be... Arcana. Arcana. Um, where am I? Probably with... Oh! <laughs> I'll be Arcana okay, right. with a disadvantage. Uh, d -d -d and that goes for everybody. If MD actually cared. Oh, yeah! That's damn good, buddy. Damn good. Yeah! So, he looks a lot like a drawing you've seen in a book in the Golden Order. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, my. I take it that's all I can remember. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie, that was an almost impossible check. <laughs> yeah. Do I remember what book? No. Just that I remember seeing strangers not to speak to if you're out in the world. <laughs> yeah. If you encountered this man, do not ever tell him your name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and if well, he <laughs> and if he likes what you wear, that means he will eat you. Yes. <laughs> um, well, we're screwed. Salad dressing. You guys are screwed. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you you remember enough to know that. This is not... They're unlikely to be native to the world. Put it that way. Does that make them a threat? <laughs> I don't know. How uh, xenophobic is Crumber? <laughs> well, he's a member of the Golden Order. Hey, they're not all zealots, but they, they welcomed you. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, if they're not from this world, I mean... It's not always a bad thing, right? You all, yeah. all work for Celeste. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and her exact words were user of the world I am not yeah okay I'll give you that imagine this was just Celeste oh my god down. I was going to say Celeste <laughs> with the hood down <laughs> <laughs> it's like ah that explains the hood <laughs> uh, no but yeah that's as much as you're getting from that role uh, you know the person's not of this world and it was definitely something you read in a book from the Golden Order yeah right I will, pre I will press on this later. Yes. So he stands there and he's obviously implying what's the transaction costs here? What are we what are we talking about? Right, so are we talking money then or would you prefer something else? Well, as I said before, he said obviously money is only good value if you value money. He likes unique things, is what he said. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can scratch it up a wee bit for you. <laughs> yeah. um, Would you like information about what's happening in the world? Yeah, looks like it. Can you make a wisdom save for me, Rich? Oh, shit. Save. Nice. Yes, I can. yes, you can. You definitely can. Oh. Roll twenty is obviously kind tonight, isn't it? <laughs> um, except to Arya, apparently. Um, wow. Yeah. So average, average, average. Too. Terrible, good, good is what we've rolled so far, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I. You feel them just poke around your head, right? But. It doesn't feel like because you've been on like psychic attack before, I'm sure, from other things. Um, yeah, probably. probably. You've probably been trained in the order to like resist stuff like that. And mm -hmm. this doesn't feel directed. This feels like just by being near the person, they have this weird like vibe of like knowledge wants to like sift towards them. Yeah. Right. Um, but you're able to obviously use your kind of like your training and your mental discipline, and you kind of block out. Uh, and he, he smiles and he says. Is there anything unique happening in the world? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Ach. Just tell him. Why not? Let's see. Let's see. I mean, we've, we've already shoved demon ash in his face. You know, <laughs> it's, I think he's kind of going to jump to his own conclusions. So. Well, let me tell you the origins of this demon ash. Yeah. It is, we've traveled demon around ash. a bit. It's from demons. <laughs> yes, but it's from a hellhole demon. Yeah. I see. And he kind of just looks and like pulls his head back a bit. Eh? And he says, And how is this unique? Well, the the information is unique. I think you'll struggle to find anybody else around here who knows it, but uh, portals have opened up from the demon realm to here, uh, including the abyss which we've came back from. Uh, so you are there's... the people that started those rumours in the town? Uh, rumours imply they're not true. Not necessarily. Imply? imply. Rumours imply they... the travel. And he waves his hands mystically. <laughs> and then he says, uh, Just on my way to open up the shop this morning, I overheard many people discussing the dangers of demons upon our doorstep. He just looks ever slightly suspiciously. There is definitely a danger of demons approaching your doorstep. Whether or not you're on your doorstep yet, I am not aware. In actual fact, you have crossed the threshold of my doorstep with demons and he waves at the case. Uh, Demons in a safe form. Predisposed. <laughs> and he, he, Disposed of. He laughs and then he kind of like closes the case of the crossbow case over. And he says, and he kind of like pats it gently. And he's like, there are no safe forms for demons to be in, unfortunately. So you're telling me that it could reassemble itself? No. I'm saying. It would be unwise to think that's beyond them. Damn. And he kind of nods at you. Yes. Damn. What demon was this, by the way? Was that just a wee nice, wee friendly demon, or was it one of the big ass ones? <laughs> 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 I, I think it was one of the the suits of armor. I think, like, I don't was honestly it? remember, but I'm pretty sure it was a suit of armor that collapsed. Because I'm sure, wasn't this when she, like, the trio were there? And it was the the fight, the, the big seats. fight at the hellhole? Not the seats. Cause it yeah, was, because, uh, yeah, because it was, it was only, it, we've only really fought the yeah, it was like, no, the, animated uh, armors. Yeah, so it was like the Royal Army were fighting, remember? I, mm. The Royal Army were fighting, you dropped in. I, there was a couple of crit rolls at the start and everybody panicked. And then eventually, like, you guys and the Royal Army were triumphant. And then... You had a wee picnic, and then Sophie got lost in the bag. Ah, oh, the bag! <laughs> like that's a—I'm sure it's from then, because I don't know what else you would have fought and scooped up, mm. right? Because I don't think it was in the abyss. I'm pretty sure it wasn't in the abyss. I'm sure it was way after. So, yeah. So I think it was literally one of the suits of armor that came out of hell. So, essentially, the thing that, like, turned its red energy into, like, the bow enchantment for Arya. So, I mean, you've got, like, the former body in ash form and the former spirit in bow form of that thing. <laughs> so... That's going to be a bit of a worry. Yeah. This, I, are, are you sure we're not evil? <laughs> no. Um, so this guy starts like like as you're all sitting kind of looking at him, wor worrying about the danger of carrying around a box full of demon ash. He starts just like kind of like massaging his beard down his face. Is there anything unique that you you would like? <laughs> he smiles. Says, I am happy to appraise. Anything you do, unique, but I would never dare take from you. You come to me asking for my assistance. I can definitely confirm this is in fact a former demon. 
demon still if you carry concern. Yeah. I pass the we box are again. concerned. Just, uh, would you be willing to write that down so we could uh, present it to Lord Bramlett Deep? Lord Bramard Deep in, you mean? Yeah. My audio yeah. is a bit jank. So, yeah. And uh, he then just, like, stops kind of, like, thinking, playing with his beard, and he puts his hand up, uh, and then, like, a butterfly lands on it, and then he starts turning the butterfly into, like, a silver piece, and he starts rolling it between his fingers. And he says, This guy is such a... And then he, like, he, like, he grabs the coin and throws it up and turns into a butterfly again and just vanishes, and he says, Again, unique things interest me. Oh, hold on, I've got something you, he would consider unique. It's not unique. <laughs> I have a book that you might be curious to read. Hand him the book from the kid, Eremos. Right, okay. Oh, the one that, yeah, the one that we can. Yeah, well, we read once and said, yeah. help me. Be it said, find me. Yeah. <laughs> find me. Yeah, you want to give him that book? Yeah, yeah well, hand him to, uh, what do you think of this he looks at it and then he says, I'm not giving them yet. Well, that's the thing, that's what he's about to ask, right? He says, Is this what you're trading for the authenticity? Would this be enough for you? It seems to be of value to you. It, it, I've carried it for a long time. It's from somebody who. That, that book has traveled places, I'll tell you, that's for sure. Yeah, it has. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually wondering how useful it's going to be in the future. Probably not massively. <laughs> I mean, that's Can a... Stay in writing in it at the moment? Was he, is he open? And he says, ah, so you ask another task of me. Translate your book. <laughs> uh, if you tell me enough about that book. Yeah, you <laughs> can find enough about that. I might not need the book, and you could keep that. And that it's a very unique book. So you wish to halt the transaction you initially desired to add in a separate transaction, conditional on the first? And you see him start to get lost in his own explanation of the process. <laughs> And then he just stops and he starts just like kind of playing with his beard again and he says, I can see why you draw the attention of many a curious dwarf on the streets of Anvil. Yeah, but they're not as good as Mars as you are at logic puzzles. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> if you can tell me where the, yeah, the, the, the creator of that book, and I think is hidden in the book, that information. Uh, then I would need the book anymore. It gives you a look that, again, you would need to roll to get the full reading on, but it definitely seems to have shifted his mood a bit when you mention the location of the creator of the book is hidden within the book, blah, blah, blah. All that. <laughs> Massive change in his disposition. Um, the equivalent of well, finally telling him... Anybody like him yeah, right. love this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's not, not every day that he doesn't just get the same old crap coming into his store, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And he says, I see. Then I will accept the book as payment for the authenticity. And he taps the box again. That would be acceptable. Any additional information I found out regarding the book could also be bartered for at a later date. Ooh, that's a hard bargain. Isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> remember you can go away and talk about it as a team because I mean a lot of that might involve abandoning Aramos as like best clue right um, yeah. so I don't know if you want to talk about that in private or if you want to just if you're happy to commit to that now which because the book was given to you by Aramos so it's yeah. ultimately it's your call but maybe it's a party decision because it is your Sorry, Amos. We couldn't save you because we had to sell the book. Yeah, was, we needed you know to get like. a certificate to get into the dwarves, so we had to sell your book to do that to convince the lord to get us to the king to let us go north to speak to the white to get the red to help the demons in the abyss. Yes, I'm sure I'll understand all that. 
my <laughs> brain just it's like broke. you've been there Irma. you know what the abyss was like <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, does Reach talk to the rest of the party about it or does he do you know what's the plan there yes I do yeah do you take everybody back outside or yes yeah I said we'll talk about it yeah um uh, you hands a kitty back the case very like carefully with like a hand on each side and like as if you're giving someone a sword and he says until your return and hands it back to you I just sort of <laughs> grab it one hand shove it back in a bag yeah <laughs> like thanks <laughs> Like it's not dynamite, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you just head back out into the street. Other doors close around you. <laughs> they have reopened while you were out of sight, yeah. Do we just start partying? <laughs> yeah, it just depends. I think it's Reach that's about to lead with this next part, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do we think about this? Uh, it would mean we'd need to come back here and deal with this tricky character again to be able to. Uh, uh, I dare you say tricky. <laughs> Elimus is. <laughs> He's just a race you've never seen before. From potentially outside the existence of the world, he floats when he wants to, and just want like already seemed to know it was Demon Ash. How dare you say tricky? <laughs> <laughs> I also kept your rolled for all this, so how dare you blame me? <laughs> mm. So yeah, what's the what's the vibe from the party then? Because I think Rich just like is probably holding the book still, looking at it. Here's the thing: what about um, Arya? Arya was pretty close to Eremos. Yeah, that's the thing. Arya wouldn't really be sure what to say because she kind of, like, obviously she wants him back probably more than anybody else, but at the same time, she realises that the book has not exactly been useful. I mean, we don't really have something to give this guy that's not money. It just depends if you think you've got anything else that's unique, right? right? That's all. That was his one condition, was I like unique things. Yeah. So. I mean... <sighs> We do have unique things. I've got my axe, Sophie's got her dagger, mm. Adri's got her bow. Um, yeah, but I mean, without like one of us not then having our yeah. weapon, because technically I mean, my bow is unique as well. I think yeah, that's that, yeah. That's you said that, yeah. Also, you do have literally like oh, a, yeah. a jug summoned by the god dragon. Like. I am not <laughs> giving up my jug. Like, no, I never mentioned well, that, though. Yeah. As, as well, though, he is asking, like, what... It's like, does does this hold value to you? Like, I've got my pan flute, which is mm -hmm. very, you know, valuable to me. Yeah. yeah. But it just depends. With I mean, I don't mind up, giving yeah. up... I don't mind giving up the dagger that I've got, because I, I don't use it as much as I should. You honestly should use that all the goddamn so, like, time, it's amazing. <laughs> I know. So powerful, it's so OP. I really don't want you to give I, I really don't want us to give up like our unique we like our unique items. Mm. Like our unique weaponry. I mean I've got a golden order crowbar. <laughs> God, that's a unique item. Sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> she does. Yep. <laughs> I, right, no, no, just just making sure, like, I might have to put yeah. this. Golden <laughs> Order Crowbar. Yes. Like, Maker's Mark and Everett. Okay, Why sure. is this the uh, it is confusing part? Gold she, crowbar made of gold. <laughs> she's also the one that had the case full of Demon Ash for this exact scenario to have happened. Yeah, so, like, like, Kitty has answers, so, right? <laughs> like, so, Sophie, this is, this is why I love you, because you never cease to astound me. <laughs> I've also got a golden order grappling hook, so. A oh, flooded fog. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard that one before. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's like, what do you think is, um, like, worth not only giving up, right? But yeah, like, 
it is for the for all intents and purposes this guy's like name on a piece of paper, right? To say, yeah, this is certified demonish. Um, so, but like, does his name even hold any weight? Right. Like, yeah, is he a like trusted it. source? Yeah. The thing is, you know, he can float off the ground, so he's got that going for him. Um, yeah. Hmm. It's up to you. Like again, I'm I'm not here to tell you what you think you should give up for this guy. I'll just let you know, especially he was very enti enticed by that book. Uh, so that was definitely unique. Let's face it. How many people do you know have books like that, right? One. Well, yeah. two. That's <laughs> a moment ago, but yeah, well, <laughs> I feel like. Two, one or another. <laughs> Sorry, we should go probably find the what's it dude and be like, yeah. So we've got someone who says they can tell like ascertain that it is demon ash so what does that name hold any weight like is that a good person to go to that's actually a, yeah that's a very good point yeah. i'm actually a bit disappointed we'll see if it's thought about if you brought him with us he'd have got all this information just when we came in to the shop mm -hmm. uh, yeah because the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep, the guy kind of said oh so you do know it's demon ash good <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Thank you. Goodbye. Yep. Goodbye. <laughs> so Shane doesn't get any like recording spells or smartphones. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Damn it. It's almost like maybe the dialogue would have been slightly different too if you had come in. It might have been. <laughs> maybe. <you know. laughs> I couldn't possibly say it with the GM rules. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's not the worst idea. So does Kitty come up? Kitty says that to the group, and then yeah. Yeah. So, like, we should probably go find him because it's all right us getting his word, but does his word hold any weight? Like, is he a trusted source? Yeah, so are we going to go find him? Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be a good that idea. Nice. So, you just do that thing where you can say, oh, we'll think about it and leave the shop and never return. Or do you just go back and let the guy know <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> I see. I want to go back in and pressure uh, and talk to them about some other things, but well, well, I don't you, want it. To... You could have done that if you wanted to while they were talking outside, if you want to, right? Yeah, the thing is, I don't want to risk offending him so that he doesn't. But you've just said, help. I want to go ask him about stuff and pressure him. Dot, dot, dot. I don't want to offend the guy. No, <laughs> no, no. I don't You're want to in offend control him of that. Where, he's not, where he doesn't help us after he's helped us. Mm. That's different. Yeah, how do you know he wouldn't just turn it into a butterfly though after he helped you? <laughs> right? So, don't offend that, wizards, right? Damn it, right, okay. Right, I'm not I'm not trying to offend him, I just want to <laughs> find out more about him. I love the idea okay, of Crumbar right. staring into space, having this argument with his face. Mm, 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 <laughs> no. Mm. Okay, right, plus 10, I go in, negative 10, I don't. Oh, God. Yes! I'm not going. <laughs> Thank God for that. No, no, I'm not, that's not negative 10. That's a. That's still yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's still on the positive side, buddy. Still, I think Less you're going. Than 10. I know what you meant. No, was, <laughs> you, you know what oh I meant. God. I just wanted to go. Don't in. play this game. <laughs> is this for what? I still this is for I think you should go in, buddy. I'm not going to lie. I think it's, it's, a, it's a scene to have while you're here, right? Because it's going to be like another hour to get back. Try and find that noble guy in another hour. It's back more here. so. No, I, it, it's more so. I don't want to forget. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. I mean, what is the worst that can happen? Right, your soul gets trapped in a butterfly for the rest of existence. Like you know what the way right. <laughs> The way I see it, my alignment's chaotic. Boom, I'm going to go in and talk to him. I think how drunk you get on a gallon of wine, though. Right. If you're a butterfly. Just a few <laughs> of it. Oh, man. <laughs> Sweet nectar, you <laughs> could say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I like, am buttercrumb. Maybe you... Right, so the scene is that you guys are talking outside, and then obviously Kitty comes out with, we should probably go get that other guy and run this guy's name by him to see if that's going to have any weight. That scene happens. Everybody goes, "Yeah, that's a brilliant idea." I can't believe we didn't think of bringing him with us. And then you turn around, and Crumbar's already walked back inside. <laughs> For God's sake! Mm. So you get the smell of that first meal after, like you know, killed by your own hands, Crumbar. And you walk back inside. That pleasant mm. memory. Um, he's back to like floating again, just like with his eyes closed. Is he, is, is he just having a wee float? Yeah. Aye, hanging in float. the boot. Aye, hanging in the boot. 
<laughs> and then uh, um, he re- like he opens one of his eyes when you pop in. And says, ah, back so soon, poorly dressed one. <laughs> and he puts his feet on the ground. Um, I've just came back to let you know that the group are going to go and find uh, a friend that we have made here uh, to come along uh, for him to come along but I wanted to ask you some things myself okay no it's it says friends are good things to have in these trying times agreed I seem to have made a good few recently as well, uh, which have came in the, very handy. The guy just looks around the shop awkwardly. <laughs> like, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, it, I'm guessing there's like maybe like a, like a seat in front of them or anything like that or is it just there's like no more? like there's not even like a like the a car like even the counter that you sat the case on isn't there anymore mm-hmm. like maybe so if you think back you realize four. that appeared when you need one so yeah <laughs> yeah i'll it's more so that I'm just sort of not standing, staring down at him. I'll uh, sit down. Eh, hey, you're like not. He is very tall. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um. Either way, Crumbar's still hungover, and I'd, and, and while looking around, I go, "Um, you don't have a place for me to sit, do you?" Yes, just relax, and I was like, "There's." You look behind you, and there's a seat. I'm like, oh, thank you. And I sit down. Yeah, so he's about s- he's about seven ish feet, maybe just over seven feet. To give you like a. So he's taller than me. Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, well, you ever survive? I know. I'm regretting everything I've just said. I'm just gonna write this down now because I've now said that. So he's seven feet tall. Maybe a perspective um, thing. Maybe he stores at a slope. Who knows? <laughs> I just go I'll like just a house go, of mirrors. Like, <laughs> I would just lean back in the like yeah, in the like chair, chair yeah. a wee bit. Yeah, lean back in a wee bit, and I'd be like, "Sorry if I've came off as temperamental. This hangover is not as." Can Easy roll, to deal with as I'm used. Roll perception for me as well. Roll uh, with disadvantage. No, no. no just not normal. Yeah. The disadvantage is uh, only because uh, of how rare he is, race wise. Oh, right. I, I thought it was because I was hungover. Nope. <laughs> no. Uh, perception. Said, yeah. It would have been the same for every day, that roll. Um, no, carry on. It's just ah. a normal roll for perception, yeah. Uh, just making sure I'm clicking on the right perception. Give me a thought. That's not bad. It's pretty damn good. These are all rolling quite well. Again, except Adri, but she'll probably end up critting soon. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> when you, you sit down and you start to talk, you stop because you notice you're sitting on a seat that would have been handmade in your tribe. How much of that came through? <laughs> yeah, all of it. And it's... I think I would get to the point where I'm like, you know, sorry for my, and then I just kind of like, as I'm digging into the chair a bit. Yeah, because you notice it's like a kind of like, a big kind of almost stool type kind of cushion made of like, animal skins, all stretched over mm. and like padded. Uh, it's that kind of way. It's, it's that kind of way. It's also maybe like a familiar feel. Mm-hmm. Like, you know that way. It's like if yeah. you sit in your your sofas at home and go somewhere else. It's like Trump bar spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ass groove. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I was just looking. Where did you get this chair? You required a chair, 
I pulled one from your memories. There you go. Hmm. So technically, I should ask, magic. where did you get this chair? This okay, just, he just kind of chuckles a bit to himself. Yeah. Hmm. You go. This is a chair from my old tribe, and those are memories I don't share with anyone. So how you access them is. Very interesting. He kind of like taps his nose with like his, his kind of pointed nail uh, twice and he smirks at you and he says you chose to share this whether consciously or subconsciously. It's not mine to take. I think at this point as well I'd just kind of take in like a big snap like you know Look a big, around big a of incense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, big a big weapon I go I guess that explains the smell as well. And it says, Ah yes. I find people who enter the store are in a better mood for trade if they remember fondly. Again. Few fun memories. Interesting that you could access them. But I didn't. I don't see the chair you see. I didn't smell the smells you smell. And he just chuckles at that. <laughs> I are, think I'd kind of join says, him well. And he says, those are for you, not me. And I, I, I think it was like, I'd just kind of gesture and be like, and I see you have no need for a chair. I sat for a very long time long ago. I got over it. And he kind of chuckles about that. <laughs> Are you over smells as well? And he's, he laughs. No, that's what the incense is for. <laughs> I'm curious as to what you would smell then in this room. When I choose to leave through the door, I smell my mother's cooking. Hmm. Good memory, I guess. A long time ago, unfortunately. Nice to know I still have it rattling around in here. He taps his head. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I do mind you asking. I meant no offence by it. And none was taken. You can only give. I do not take. And he laughs at that as well. <laughs> um, I think at this point I go, Sorry, I was not I, I, I cut off before. Believe my hangover may have had me in a bit of a bad mood there. I think I, I have something for that somewhere. And he starts to like tap his lips and then look at like a shelf full of like glass bottles. Hmm. I'll be like, <laughs> anything's welcome at this point. But anyway, my name is Crop. I'm a paladin with the Golden Order. Can you repeat that? Because it cut out for me. I just go, eh, it's like, I just say, anyway, I apologize. My name's Crumbar. I'm a paladin with the Golden Order. You seem only half dressed, paladin. And he smirks at you. And I kind of look down and I'm like, shit, did I not come out wearing pants? And yeah, no, you're, <laughs> you're obviously you're in your, your standard outfit, yeah. right? So Exactly, yeah. So I look down and I'm like, I don't quite understand. Do you want to roll insight dread? on this, maybe? <laughs> oh, is this? Ask yeah, what yeah. Are you missing, but yeah, keep doing. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, in fact, yeah. What am I missing? Yeah, we'll roll insight. Oh, ching ching. Yeah. yeah so Some you've pieced together item. out of everything that you said to everybody. You only gave him half your name. Hmm. 
when he said you're only half dressed yeah Kitty and Arya gave their full names mm. and Reach only gave like a shorthand version of his name Does Reach even have a second? I do. Reach has a full name. Oh, okay, I name. thought it was like Cher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. Reach's full name is Dawn's Golden Reach. Yeah. That's his full name. Okay. Uh, but he goes by Reach, obviously, because hi, I'm Dawn's I Golden Reach. I always thought your name was a title. I did too. <laughs> Fair enough. Names are titles in a way, so I mean, yeah. But, but yeah. like, like I thought maybe like Dawn would have been some kind of reference to the Golden Order. I mean, it is, and you being like their right hand or something, you know. But that's how people get names, Grumbar. That that's how he got a name. Reach of the gold. Yeah. yeah. My brain hearty. And he's a monk that can yeah. punch people at a distance. It fits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reach to spent a long time on that name. <laughs> yeah. um, Just like his master is called Blade of the Plains, like who's a dwarf at the order. That's a thing. I've had so many mind fucks this <laughs> man. I don't know if I, I think I need a, a, a day off of this. <laughs> you had a day um, off this. Nah, you know what I mean. But anyway, um, so you sit there, you have your playful back yep. and forth. Yep. He says you're only half dressed. Yep. And I click on yep. the fact that he's meant that, and I go. And I just kind of. Is he still facing the bottles? Oh, no. He's be, he only kind of looked at that as a kind of. Kind of almost playful joke when he said that. I, like, oh, I think I've got oh, something for that, you know? And he's been oh, looking at you. Oh, right, sorry, I thought he was, like, then tinkering with him. And I go, and I, like, look back up and go, Chieftain Crumbar then a bit. Ah. Is my fault. And he kind of smiles. He goes, much better. It suits you more. Hmm. And I just kind of give a grin. However, the smile doesn't. And he says, <laughs> uh, Why smile when the title brings you such pain? Mm, see, now, I'm trying to think if, na if physically I would have had my axe on me. Probably, right? Probably. Yeah, you know. Because when I make this guy jump you, you'll be like, well, I definitely would have brought my axe. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think it's some... I think I definitely think it's an everyday carry for Crumbar. <laughs> and I'll... I'll, I'll literally just uh, put my axe on the table. You know, the <laughs> weapon in the shape of an axe on the table. So that table appears for you to do so, yeah. You know what would be even better? Is if I didn't even realise that the table wasn't there yet. I mean, I feel like that's and what just like, happened, because I did tell you there was no table yeah, in the room. So yeah, I feel that's already happened, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> yep. Um, there you go. This axe is all that remains of my tray. You could say that this axe is my tray. He looks at it and he says I understand the sorrow now. Hence why I don't use the title often. Perhaps you should grow a tribe. <laughs> Make the axe stand for something new. Ancestral. I think I just nods at you. Mm. I do like that idea. Currently, I have other matters at hand to make sure that there's a world left that I may grow a tribe in. Yes, I am somewhat familiar with losing one's home. Where is it that you're from? Unfortunately, you do not possess anything unique enough for that answer. Mm, so he's wanting payment. I mean, I think he just said you can't pay him for that answer. 
Ah, Because right. you just said you don't possess anything unique enough for that answer, is what you said. Hmm. Fair enough. I'm just curious as to say what race you would be. I've only seen your an image of and it is kind of a gesture of like your kind in a book in the Golden Order once before. The Golden Order I keep books on wizards. He laughs at you. I didn't say your profession, sir. I said your race. My profession, in fact, is memory mancer. Hmm. I would explain how he knows what's in the crates. We just told him yeah. through our heads. Never mind anything else. Or he, the ash remembers. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I just want to know what he is. Because <laughs> he. he like it definitely looks like an elf of some kind and the fact that he's shown up in a golden order book is mm -hmm. making me wonder is he something that we should be worried about or I mean this guy's cool as fuck I'm not gonna lie <laughs> no, yeah definitely cool as fuck like mm. just trying to find out as much information as I can about him hmm well, on the plus side, you've not offended them yet, so it's going well. Mm -hmm. That is good. Mm. But I have a feeling that I'm not going to be able to really get much information on his backstory. Of well, what he's not willing to tell you what happened right to him. Uh, huh. There's maybe a reason for that. And maybe you've explained the reason based on what you have told him, right? Yeah. Like, you don't exactly like talking about what happened to you. That's true. Yeah. Ah. Right. Um. Maybe he's the axe of his tribe. You don't know that. No, that's what I'm just thinking. I'll be like, well, whatever happened to your tribe, show, you know, would not be quite as bad as you. Like, you would not need to feel the same guilt as what I feel. He smiles and he says, unfortunately you cannot take that. You can only give that. And he kind of just like nods again solemnly at that. Uh, he's not looking as pleasant, he's looking polite now, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. um, it's obviously mm -hmm. it's like somebody trying to cover up. I don't really want to talk about this because you're trying to get me to talk about what happened to me. I've told you I'm not telling you what's going to happen to me. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's being polite. Mm -hmm. And he says, You had questions for me. Yes. Really, the questions have all been answered to the best that he could. Um, I might just be blunt with them. Go for it. Yeah. What's the loop? I'm actually with the old orc. That's out of character. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just say it. My only cons... I, I'm, I'm only trying to... Oh, wait. Hang fire. Nah, that I didn't rage him. I was going <laughs> to cast Zona. I'm like, mm, nah, don't want to do that. Uh, plus, you'll probably, let, I don't know, mental blow me into a chicken. Um, I'm just saying, it's like the Golden Order don't tend to keep books on well behaved races. I'm just interested in how a book, how your image would have ended up in one of their books. He laughs and says, 
Didn't you know I'm rather famous? And he just laughs. Kind of like a belly laugh. Mm. And it's like, I just kind of like point to my teeth and I go, or like point to like my face and be like, I don't know if you know, but orcs aren't really up to date on what's popular. What makes you so famous? He laughs and he says, I've met a few orcs in my time. Each of them is famous as they need to be. My fame. That will cost you if you wish an answer. And what is your price? How much does the answer mean to you? Value it. We will exchange. Hmm. I don't just want to be like, here's a bunch of money. Mm. And a bunch of butterflies, you mean? Mm. Mm. Now we were like, I've just thought of something that if I was Crumber, I'd hope I would have this idea for. But now I'm wondering how much of it is me metagaming for you. <laughs> I'm not giving them a pamphlet. I've thought, I'm thinking about it though. What does your pamphlet do though? Hmm? What does your pamphlet do though? Makes badass music. <laughs> of? What? What does it make music of? When? Nope. Yeah. This is a crumber question. Oh, uh, it makes music these... from wet. Yep, keep going, yep. Finished answer. <laughs> no. Oh, it makes... oh, it's normally something I play in times of either chill out or great victory or something like that. But essentially, it was the last gift given by my family to me. So, and the songs are from where? Oh yeah, Archie Tribe days. Right. Mm -hmm. What would they be considered? Memories. Yes. What's this guy all about? <laughs> this, this guy's totally memory man. So, nom nom nom. Yep. I actually had to thought mm. myself, like as I said just before I said it, I'm like, oh man, you could totally play my song that means a lot to him. <laughs> and then we'll laugh when you roll badly. <laughs> you could offer him I a song. Mm. Let's try that. I'll pull it's it. A, I mean, I'm not you. saying it's going to work, but it's uh, it's kind of cool. Great, yeah, great idea, Crumble. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> See, to be fair, he did get it himself. <laughs> just a lot yeah. of prompting. Right, tell me the song. Talk me through it. I don't mean like every single like word in the song, but because uh, <laughs> like, that's hard for seconds, to make. Give me, give me a second. Let me get. Let me transpose pan flute into the guitar. Uh, <laughs> um, it would have been the kind of. It would have been the song that was playing during the memory that the smell in the place has given me. So round about once, you know. First hunt over, and I'm prep. You know, in the meal that or the food that I've caught has been getting cooked. So it's like Crumbers' well, first victory while waiting on the cooking. Yeah, and it's just yeah that kind of happy merry try beats today tune, but it's like it means a lot more today because I made the song happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like you're the reason why everybody was happy and celebrating, mm. and I'm the I'm the reason this music is being played. Cool. And you're uh, gonna give that over? Yeah, that mm -hmm. is your thing. Yeah. So I think he sits, he listens. Guys outside, you are all just watching him sit and chat away to this guy, and then just start playing his pan flute. Um, <laughs> so obviously, I think you are all maybe just somewhat mid conversation to make this make sense, and maybe the song is what attracts your attention to this door since it's weird if you just ignored him and left him alone in the store for this long <laughs> um, but yeah 
you play the music. Um, obviously, you remember what you remember because of all the memories it evokes, uh, and then you forget the tune. Shit on a handbag. So you no longer remember how to play that song. But Is this a win-win? Can you keep playing? Can you play another? <laughs> <to identify? laughs> Fuck you! So, so you do that, right? You play that, you finish the music, and you sit there obviously with all the emotions and feelings it evokes for you there, Crumbar. Uh, mm. And then you realise that you don't remember the tune anymore. It's gone. Oh, that's hard. That is horrible. And uh, he stands there and he's like, he's been sitting like, with his eyes closed, kind of like playing with his beard while you played mm. to him. And he says, Yes, that would be more than enough for the payment. Thank you for that. I am, in fact, the head of the Arcane Anvil. And uh, we take our break there, guys. So, yeah. Ooh. So for that, that translates to he's in charge of the magic school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got the right guy to begin. Yeah. Uh, can I say we'll be back in ten minutes? And we still don't we'll know see. what he is, right? No. I mean, who he is? Yeah. But I'll see everybody I mean, in ten minutes. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.